Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Nasir Evans, host of SPD TV, the all-new store processing channel. Should I put on a scrub shirt? Maybe. Maybe next time. So this is for store processing technicians, uh, people who want to be store processing technicians, people trying to get certified. Uh, OR nurses, surgical tech, anybody who wants to know more about sterile processing, surgical instruments, entrepreneurship, and just taking it to the next level. Becoming the best version of yourself, whatever that is, because it's different for everybody. It's unique to each and every person. So don't think that you have to keep up with somebody else, like trying to get a certification because somebody got it or trying to get a position because uh, someone has it. Get into that place that you really want to be in. Being that happy person who's happy to show up to do whatever it is that they're trying to do. Whether it's work somewhere or start their own business, create their own thing, whatever it is. I hope to be able to help you. Over the next few weeks, I hope to share a lot of things with you. You need a position to validate your passion for your job. Uh, burnout, leadership, products, the good and the bad, conferences. Another thing, we're gonna talk about money, something no one wants to talk about. It's like it's always secretive, but how are you gonna make money and grow money if you don't talk about money? So we're definitely gonna talk about money and uh, 401ks and stuff like that, um, and saving like that to kind of get you in the right path. So after like, I guess like almost 15 years now, of working at a sterile processing station with instruments all over the place and surgical lubricant. Uh, <laughs> you know, well like surgical milk. Anyway, what I love about having my own office and my own desk is being able to drink my coffee at the desk. Like, it's the little things I'm telling you. Ooh. Okay, so right now I'm at the surgical annex. In my new office, I will give you like a little tour, but everything's not in place yet. We're still moving everything in. So as soon as everything gets together, I'll show you everything. But uh, what I wanted to get to today is I got a couple great questions uh, in my post recently. So let's get to the first one. So recently in one of my posts, I received a great question uh, from one of you great guys, or ladies actually. Um, they wanted to know, what's the best way to learn all your surgical instrumentation? So let me start. Start by saying, it's very difficult for one person to know all of your surgical instrumentation. I mean, there are literally thousands of different uh, pieces of surgical instrumentation. Uh, there are specialized instruments. Uh, then there are those things that you may never see. You may not get to learn all of them, but you can certainly learn a huge portion of them. So one of the best ways is catalog books. Catalog books are great. Usually they're free. Um, and you can go to some of those online too. Um, and usually they're in your department so that's pretty good another great thing is flashcards flashcards are really good too um, they're pretty helpful go you commute and things like that apps apps are great you can use those on your phone or on your tablet and some of them are free and some of them are like 199 99 cent very cheap so use one of those as well the absolute best way to learn your instrumentation is to basically sit down with a set and get your count sheet and just go through the set. It was really about repetition. The best way to really learn about your instrumentation is through repetition. I also use like word association. So if it has a weird name or something like that, I, uh, I kind of use that. So when I first started out and things like Mets and Bomb Scissors, something like that, I would think of the Mets or the Yankee Suction. I would think of the Yankees, whatever little little descriptive thing you can attach to the instrument that'll make it much easier to remember 
Here's another good question. The question is, I've been in the field for about 10 years now and I'm thinking about traveling. Should I travel? Definitely. I think traveling is one of the best things you can do as a technician or as a sterile process professional in, professional in general. It's nothing like sitting in the airport waiting for your airplane with your bags packed uh, on your way to your next destination um, to help another department so they're able to help their patient. Traveling for me was one of my best experiences. Really loved it. I love the people that I came in contact with. Uh, I love the facilities that I went to. Um, I love the suite that I had. It really was a great experience. So if you could take not being home for a few months at a time. Oh, I got another question and this one uh, it's on my Instagram. I, I've taken a class a few months ago and I'm just about to take my test. What should I study? All of it. All of it, all of it, all of it. What you want to study are the boring things. The boring things are the things that you really need to go through. The more exciting things uh, like the anatomy and, and some of the sterilizer things and uh, about the instrumentation you'll kind of retain them is inventory management, uh, things like uh, your regulators, uh, you know, the organizations uh, like OSHA, the World Health Organization, JACO, you know, those things, what they do um, and the difference between them. Maybe those are the things that you probably want to go over. It won't be all fun and games. Mostly, mostly, but not all the time. So thanks again. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, don't forget to tune in and tell somebody where we're at. Tell somebody what we're doing. Because, you know, still processing is important, man. <laughs>